Hello, Flame community. This is Jeff Kyle with the Flame Learning Channel. In the previous video for the match grain node, we went over the basics of the node and how to use a normalized grain output to regrain multiple shots. In this video, we'll be going over the grain dispersion workflow, how to use an external mat, and how to use the scale and transform tools. When working on a shot, it's a common occurrence to change something about the shot in a way where the composite might look good to the naked eye, but when we match the grain from the original plate, we can start to see faint traces of the original plate in the grain. How much of a problem this is depends on the nature of the shot and how strict the approval process is, but now, new to Flame 2025, we have a fantastic solution to this age-old problem, and it's called dispersion. If we take a look at my shot here, I've done a quick composite where I removed some text from a sign. It looks pretty good, but it's just a still frame, so I'll need to make sure I match the grain from the scene. I'll pull out our new match grain node and connect the front to my composite, the degrain clip to my degrain clip, original clip to my original clip. I'll hit Analyze, and let's take a look at what we're working with. The analysis is done, and it looks pretty good. But if I look closely at the part of the sign where the text used to be, it looks like the grain is just not there. I can work hard to adjust the gamma and exposure with keyboard shortcuts Shift-W and Shift-E to view the scene in a way that allows me to see the grain and see the issue, but it can be a little tedious to get there. I'll reset this view for now because there's a much better way. There is a special view just for this purpose called Boosted Grain View assigned to keyboard shortcut F6. This helps us to see that in the area that used to have black text, there's little to no grain information there, which explains why the grain doesn't appear in that area in our match grain node. As I hinted at earlier, the solution to this problem lies here in the Disperse tab. When I hit Active, we'll see a yellow sample box in the middle of the viewport. Activating Disperse samples the grain inside of the sample box and tiles it throughout the image. Looking down at the controls, we have an indicator to let us know which frame is being sampled, along with controls to show and hide the sample box and change the color to make it more visible. I can also click the Show Cells box to display the dispersion pattern and use the Cell Size field to control the tiling. Right now, since the sample box is in the middle of the car, it isn't dispersing the grain properly, so I'll take the box and move it to an area of the screen that I know has grain that is visually similar to the area being replaced, like over here. While I move the box, we can see that the grain is updating live, giving us an idea of how the dispersion is working. After I move the sample box over here, this is working really well for the composite, and it's clear that the missing grain is no longer an issue. My composite is getting grain that looks great. But the issue now is that the rest of the shot is getting that dispersed grain as well. In this case, we want to make sure only the composited area gets the dispersed grain, and the rest of the shot gets the original plate grain. To do so, I'll head back to the batch schematic and connect a mat of the composited area to the mat input of the match grain node. And when I head to the match grain node, I can see that if I look down at the controls under the external mat, which was previously grayed out, Flame realized a mat was connected and it becomes active. Looking at the result of the match grain node here, I can see when I switch between the result F4 view and the original clip F2 view, that the dispersed grain is only being applied in the area defined by the mat. Just as a small note, to ensure there's no softening taking place in this match grain operation, the mat input isn't a normal mat input, but a special one where any pixel that's not black is considered white. So for this mat input, there's no need to be precious about softness. Before we finish up, let's take a look at a few other options here. Next to the Disperse tab is a Scale tab, giving us some fine-tuning options to control the scale of the grain in both X and Y on a per-channel basis. Since we have a mat connected, we also have the option to have this scale operation take place either across the whole image with the default bypass mat selection, or to have it take place either inside or outside the mat. The transform tab has some similar controls, but for blur and gain to further fine tune the intensity of the grain via gain or the softness of the grain with blur. Once again, on a per channel basis and with the ability to have the mat affect the transformation. If you like these videos and you're finding them helpful, please subscribe to the Flame Learning Channel and click the bell to stay notified about new content. Please feel free to comment any questions or suggestions below. And until next time, thanks a bunch for watching.